I'm here today to tell you a story about the time I spiraled into chaos deep in the jungles of Indonesia. You see, I was born and raised in Los Angeles, where growing up, I spent a lot of my free time inside air-conditioned malls, movie theaters, or museums. I never went camping or hiking as a kid, and I had a huge phobia of bugs. Let's just say no one would have called me outdoorsy. So five years ago, when I left California to go work in the jungles of Indonesia, I was just as surprised as anyone. But I'd been teaching art for 15 years at this point, and teaching had become not only a huge part of my identity, but of my purpose in the world. So when the opportunity came along to go work in a jungle in Bali at a school known for its radical commitment to creativity, to innovation, and to sustainability, I had to say yes. Naturally, I had a lot of fears going into this move, some which were founded, others not. But what got me in the end, what sent me spiraling, weren't the snakes hiding in the art supplies, the torrential rain, the frequent power outages, or even the colony of tiny ants that took over the motherboard of my laptop. It was running out of yellow paint. It was late August, the school year had just begun, and I was so excited to start the year off strong. I planned this big painting project for the entire elementary school, starting with the basics like color mixing and color wheels. But as I started to prepare the materials, I realized we were running out of yellow. And when I asked where I could get a lot more fast, which in the States I was used to being able to do in a matter of hours, I was told it didn't really work that way living on an island in Indonesia. Supplies needed to be ordered, maybe imported, and it could take weeks or even months to arrive. Now, I know this doesn't sound like a very big problem. And in the larger scheme of things, it's definitely not. But to an art teacher, it's not exactly trivial either, because yellow is a primary color, which means it's one of three from which all the other colors are created. So the idea of teaching without yellow was hard to fathom and harder still to accept and I simply refused to believe I couldn't get more. I decided to take matters into my own hands, so I started calling the art supply shops on the island one by one, but no one spoke English, so I got on the back of a motorbike taxi and braved what felt like absolute chaos on the roads, where despite a total lack of traffic lights or stop signs, somehow everyone knows when to go. I remember desperately gripping the back bar of that motorbike as I watched the individual bikes morph into the swarm of moving metal, my legs nearly grazing those of my neighbors, my hair dripping with sweat, wondering how we weren't crashing at every turn. We did this for hours, but I still didn't find what I needed. It was on the back of that motorbike when I realized the anxiety that I was feeling, this rising sense of total panic, wasn't about yellow at all. It was much bigger than that. It was about everything, everything that I thought I knew from basic problem solving to navigating traffic wasn't working here in Bali. And if I couldn't figure out how to do life well here, how could I be an effective teacher here? Because the chaos wasn't just out there on the roads or in the questionably stocked art supply stores or even in the jungle. It came right into my classroom, an open space where dogs would roam through in the middle of a lesson, where I would arrive in the morning to discover a litter of newborn kittens in a now off-limits basket of art supplies, where the paper curled just from the humidity in the air and where there weren't even walls to hang art on. How could anything I thought I knew about education work in this environment I couldn't control? I realized if I was going to stay, let alone succeed in this landscape of wildness, I would have to reevaluate everything I thought I knew 
from what to teach, to how to teach, to what teaching even means, and find the courage to begin again. Sometimes we have to bend, change directions, or circle back to the beginning, even though it can be terrifying. But we know as educators, as humans, that learning is not linear, and neither should teaching be. That circling back, that spiral, that is the shape of growth. And if you look around, you see the spiral everywhere. In Bali, it was in the ferns that grew in the cracks of my classroom floor, on the backs of the snails that appeared after the rain, even in the structure of the bamboo above me. This spiral, this Fibonacci sequence, it's in our DNA, it's on our fingertips, and it's the shape of our galaxy. Chaos and creativity merging together. And maybe when it feels like we are spiraling out of control, losing our grip on everything we know and understand, maybe we're still in that cycle of learning and growing. It's just moving faster than we're used to. So in my beautiful bamboo classroom, open to the wind, the rain, the wildness of the jungle, I had to begin again. Develop a new relationship with place and time, materials and intention. Reset my expectations and assumptions every single day. And when I did, something unexpected happened. I discovered something I didn't even know that I was missing, that maybe many of us are missing in education. I discovered freedom. Not the freedom from constraints or problems. If anything, I had a lot more of those but the freedom to be creative moment to moment, to authentically respond to the students in my classroom, what was real and relevant for them in the moment. Instead of telling them what we're gonna learn today, I started asking, what do you want to learn today? And empowering them to take the lead. And somehow the intensity of this environment sparked a deeper understanding of what it could actually look like to learn through inquiry. And then it hit me, art doesn't need yellow. My students didn't need yellow. I was the one who needed yellow. And when I set my plans and projections out of the way and embraced the uncomfortable feeling of not always being the one in control, I was able to lean into that and start saying yes. Yes, when a girl asked to paint the back of her hand, use it like a paint palette because it felt better to her. Yes, when a boy asked to swing a can of blue paint from a tree like a pendulum because he wondered what might happen on the canvas below. When students asked to make portraits out of banana leaves, yes. Yes, when they wanted to build a bamboo postal system to send each other's letters during social distancing. By leaning into yes, into the messiness of new ideas, the disruptions, and even the chaos of the jungle, it allowed a deep creativity to emerge. Inside the classroom or outside the classroom didn't even matter anymore as that boundary started to dissolve. Color and texture and scale were all around us. And we were inside that environment as artists, making discoveries and asking questions. Without being confined by walls, by rectangular pieces of white paper, by yellow paint, my students became that spiral exploring their imaginations and passions with curiosity and flexibility. And when the creative challenges and uncertainty became frustrating, which they often do, they develop the courage to spiral off in a different direction. And here's the thing, by leaning in to the chaos of the classroom, by allowing that space for children to exercise their creative freedom, their artwork didn't become chaotic and wild. 
Everyone wasn't splatter painting at every opportunity. I mean, some were actually splatter painting at every opportunity, but many of them, if not most of them, were creating art that was powerful and personal, expressing who they were, what they cared about, and how they wanted the world to change. To me, this is creativity. And not the pretense of creativity like a classroom of children painting red apples or identical landscapes, but real creativity, the kind we desperately need more of in our schools, in our lives, and on our planet. Inspiring this kind of creativity, this freedom in education, it doesn't mean moving to the jungle or going to a school without walls, because it's not about the physical walls. It's about the walls we put up in our mind, the walls of expectation, convention, and fear. A few weeks after we ran out of yellow paint, I told my students about the color wheel project we couldn't do. And one of them suggested, why not make one out of nature? So we spent the whole next week, every grade, compiling this enormous physical circle out of the most beautiful colors of the jungle. From mulberries, we found red. From a kingfisher feather, we found teal. From the fallen leaves on the paths around us, we discovered an extraordinary range of green. And it turned out that when we cut, peeled, and ground up the turmeric root, which was growing in the garden right outside the art room, we discovered a lovely shade of yellow. The truth is, we're not always going to have what we think we need. But instead of desperately grasping for it, problem solving for it, what if we open to the chaos right in front of us, wherever we happen to be, the creativity available in the moment, and find the courage to say yes and lean into the spiral. Yeah.